So let's cover simple tests in Apex, not something very fancy, more something like this. So imagine you have such a method, right? This method takes an integer n and it calculates sum, everything starting from 1 till n. And we are assuming here that n is bigger than, larger than 0 uh, and we don't calculate for, for any edge cases. So for example, we get here 3, the output here will be 6 because 1 plus 2 plus 3 will be 6. So if you have no idea about tests, how would you, how would you test that this method actually works? Well, you would go and create the loops demo variable. This is the class where my my method is written, loops demo. You will call the method, you will self save the result of the execution and you will display the result. Like this, for example, right? And you will pass some value there and you will output the result and you'd look at the result and say, hey, okay, looks good, kind of works. So what you have here is already kind of a test. It is just not automated because you will definitely not go and test like this for every business process you, you have, right? You need to have some kind of more automated way of doing that because this is, a, this is an easy example, right? But what if you have very, very complex and large business process? You're not gonna sit there and test in the developer console every, every time, right? So let's go here to the code and let's see, I have here calculate sum, right? And it's in the loops demo for me. So. To call this method, I'm just gonna have, I'm just gonna go loops demo demo equal to new loops demo, and gonna make it a little bit bigger, and then now here to call a method we have demo dot calculate sum, and here we pass three for example. Now how can we check if that works? We need to save it into the result, into any any variable, and now we can output it and we can say something like. So like result, result, equal, and then we put here the result, right? A result, I have a typo here, so I'm just gonna copy paste so it didn't have any typos. Let's first, let's let's make sure that it works. Execute, debug only, I see result is equal to six. So now the next step that we can go and is we can, instead of doing that, we can say that if result is equal, equal to six, then I'm gonna say that everything is fine. So let's say works, works, or the bet the better wording we can say uh, test test passed, and else we can say test failed, right? So we can say here test failed. Let's execute it and see it test passed. And what if we pass here four? So this condition will not be true anymore. And we execute it. And what we see, we see the test failed, right? So this is kind of, kind of very unsophisticated way of doing tests. And the test method is something that can be in two states. It can be either failed or passed, right? Because you're testing something and in the end you say, okay, the test is working or the test is not working, it means it's failed. So I have some some kind of unexpected outcome, and the way to the 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 way the way to steer this condition is with the assert are equal. But first, let's go, let's go here and let's write a test. So to write a test, it's quite easy. You just write any any class, and then you have this annotation is test, and this is going to be a test class. And then here you need you need to write the test method itself, and this is basically this whole thing. Right, so let me change here back to the three and take this whole thing here and put it here and align a little bit. Oops, not everything was aligned. Okay, for some reason I don't know why it's okay. Now everything looks aligned. And now instead of going to debug console and running, we will go to the test and we're gonna say new run and we're gonna search here for the test method called loops demo test, calculate sum, run. Here, if we go to the tests, we can see that everything works. Status, right, the test run, failures, and if we click twice, we can see here results, no errors, so everything works good. So the test the test passed. Now, if we change here to, to four, and if we run the test again, 
our test should fail, right? But it doesn't. As we see, we have a, we have a second successful run. It's not good, right? We we that we don't want to have this behavior. We want to have the behavior that if this result is correct, then our test pass. If this result is correct, our test should fail. The way to control if a test method fails or not is with the assert dot r equal. Here's how to write. Instead of instead of writing test test pass and test fail, which doesn't have any influence around the test itself, I'm gonna write here assert r are equal and here as the first parameter to this method we pass the value that we expect so we expect to have six and as the second value we pass the value that we have so result now if those two values if they match the method will the method will succeed so the, the method will pass if those two values they don't match then the value will the the then the method will fail run new run and now if we run it we see that it fails so this is exactly what we want and we see here failed expected six but got actually 10 and then it shows here the line and uh, stack trace if your if your if your stack trace is a little bit bigger than just calling one method okay so this test fails so let's get back to three so if we have if we have this three, then this is correct, right? So we expect to have six. And now this method, we can run it as many times as we want. And the most important that we're gonna run it all the time we deploy uh, our code to production. So it means that if something change in changes in the calculate sum method, we will see this change by tests starting to fail. And if your test fails, it's not bad. It's kind of good because it can indicate that you have spotted some bug that was not that was not intended. Or you spot some some behavior changes in the methods that, that were not supposed to change. Okay, so the assets are equal, quite easy, expected and actual. If they're they're equal, then passed. If they're not equal, failed. But there's not only are equal, there's actually much more, so you can go and the, the, there's really, really a lot of them. It's best practice to use more sophisticated. So if you if you testing here for true, it's be it's better to use is true than are equal. But you still can use are equal and then put for example true and then your your condition that you have. Um, but it's better to use to use those. It's best practice. Now what is the line coverage? The line coverage is what lines have you run from the test? We have we need to have 75% of line coverage. So where you can see the line coverage is here. You can see here the different line coverage. And if we search for, what was that? Loops demo, I guess. So uh, where is that? If we search for loops, loops demo, for some reason we have zero because they failed. Uh, let's run again our test because now it should not fail. Now we should get actually a little bit of line coverage. Let's see. Yeah, now we can choose here line coverage. And then we can see that with, with blue, we have the cover, the lines that we covered. And uh, where's that again? Here. And I can see that here percent, I can see that I covered 9% of the whole class. So the line coverage is simply what lines have you run from the test? And here we run calculate sum. So we only run this one. So you see that all of them, all of the remaining one are red. So they, they, they were not executed. Now the 75% line coverage is required. Kind of. What, what is important that the line coverage itself is kind of not really a metric. Because what happens if you have line coverage, but you don't test for anything? For example, in our test, if I go here and if I remove this part, we're still gonna have the 9% of line coverage, right? If we run this test. But the problem is that no matter with what value we run it, it's always gonna run. And we're always gonna have the line coverage and our test's always gonna gonna have this, this awesome green sign. But they never actually gonna test for anything actually useful. But a lot of people see it in, in some strange way because 75% it's what physically required, right? But you have in, in in you have not only physical obligations to Salesforce, you have also kind of like moral obligations, which we call best practices, right? So you don't want to write messy code, which means that 
that 75% is not really a good metric. You, you need to have not only 75%, but also functional covering, which means that you have to actually test the logic and test it quite sophisticated. So let's look again at this, at this method and let's think how many test scenarios can you actually have for this method? So just, just pause and, and think for the second, how many test scenarios you can have for that? Well, for example, you can have positive and negative, right? So positive, uh, simple addition, input three, output six. But another positive is that you don't have any addition. So you input one and you expect output one. Then another positive is yeah, you input large number and then you get uh, get some output. So those are positive. The negatives, you pass null value. That's going to break in our system. Uh, so you expect an exception. You expect that your system will break. And this is totally normal to expect that your system break. It's kind of strange to, to, to have the system that, that is completely bulletproof. So it's especially in, in Salesforce having, having CRM systems. We're not running here some kind of um some kind of airports so for us it's not it's not not a big deal if something fails and another negative is passing a negative number uh, yeah so we already have how many we already have five test cases for such a simple but that's not all because we can also test for edge cases we can test for example we, we can pass the biggest number and we can see if we can add up all the numbers up to the biggest one probably not probably it's going to cause some kind of uh, overflow issue we can also pass the smallest one and see what happens when we add a lot of negative numbers. Or we can just pass a reasonably large positive number, uh, maybe a lot of times, and then see if that uh, somehow hits the governed limits or not. So we, we already have like eight use cases for a very, very, very simple method, right? So this method, it doesn't even have any business logic. It's not even a business process. It's just a method with the input and output and very simple one. And we already have eight use cases. What I want to emphasize with it is that in a lot of, a lot of time, we actually have a lot of use cases that we can test. And these use cases are basically, or test cases, you can, you can call them. They're basically unlimited. So we can sit there and for weeks, just test, test, test our code and write our code, write super sophisticated test classes. The question is, do we have the budget for that? Depend, depending where you work, I worked a lot in consultancy and in consultancy we have a certain amount of times that we assigned to a certain client. So if I'm assigned to the client for uh, five hours a week and I spend all these five hours only on writing tests, doesn't bring any, any value to the business. Doesn't make any sense. So. Yes, tests are kind of important, but also kind of not that important. You should kind of aim for being being kind of good with tests, but also just just good enough to to have to have really good code and not to spend a lot of budget in terms of time or money. So what I consider tests to sixty percent done are tests that have one positive and one negative and eighty percent line coverage. So this is kind of like the minimum that you should have. Um, this is not the absolute minimum if you're completely in the rush, but this is something that is like kind of the, the minimum that you want to test for. What I consider quite well done tests is that we have two or three positive use cases, one negative and one edge case. Plus we have 90% and over 90%, like 95% line coverage. What would be overkill is to spend the remaining time of bringing everything to 100%. That would be a little bit overkill and a little bit too much. There are also different different types of tests that we can write. I took this I took this this screenshot this this image from one website. I'm I'm going to leave the links in the description. Basically the tests they have also own cost for running. What you want to avoid is that every time you deploy something to production, you sit there for three hours and wait until your tests are done running. So you want to avoid it. And that can happen if you have a huge org with a lot of different, a lot of different business processes that are quite heavy. So if you have, uh, I don't know, 50 triggers and uh, 
50 batches and a lot of integrations going on you can very well just just sit there for for three hours and wait for for tests what you what you want to have and i know it goes from from just sim- simple tests it goes to kind of philosophical part but you you want to have different types of tests you want to have some lightweight tests which are here called unit tests to like around 40 percent i guess and then you want to have you you want to also test for other stuff which is a little bit more slow so the 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 difference the difference is following we have integration tests and integrations tests they're, they're more on the slower part so you have the integrations test and integrations test basically we can we can see it as a business process test so you test for the whole business process for example if you have a trigger that is firing then you test that the whole trigger is firing on the insert statement you're not testing for the particular handler classes so you're testing for for the for, for the whole business process in general and of course if you have like five these tests that each test for business process they're quite long right so they, they it's going to take a lot of time to run them so instead of writing five additional test tests you want to also have unit tests unit tests they Unit tests, they attack, they test particular methods, and they are very quick to run. They are very quick, they are easy, and they are basically input-output tests. Something that we've done, so we've done a unit test in our example. So you're going to have this combination between very, very large tests and very, very small tests. Uh, So what I told you today, it's maybe like 10% of the whole testing part. We didn't discuss start test, stop test, didn't discuss the setup. We discussed a little bit of philosophy here and we discussed how to do the simplest possible test. So what I want you to do is to go and try to write really simple tests. Don't try to overthink it with just get used to the mechanics of writing tests and executing them.